Welcome back, scholars. We are now going to dive into today's lesson. Now, we just reviewed the author's use of imagery and word choice in our independent practice when characterizing Cleopatra. Scholars, it's important that you have your notes from yesterday so that you are able to truly answer our exit ticket today. So in our exit ticket, we are asked, is the poet's message about Cleopatra one of warning or one of appreciation? How does the author illustrate this message? Analyze specific textual evidence and the author's craft in your response. So scholars, in today's lesson, we are going to one, create our claim. In your claim, you are going to decide if the poet's message was one of warning or one of appreciation. After we do that, we are going to identify two author's crafts that supports your claim. By author, author's crafts, I mean identifying how the author used imagery or how the author used word choice to support your claim. And after that, we're going to focus on our analysis. And when we write our analysis, we're going to write our analysis with the hired word and make an inference or a because statement. Be sure that you have your notes out so that you are able to write down each component as we go over it. That way, when it's time for you to write your response to your exit ticket, you pretty much already have it. So let's review the discussion prompt again. Is the poet's message about Cleopatra one of warning or one of appreciation? We are now going to write a claim to respond to the prompt. Is the poet's message about Cleopatra one of warning or one of appreciation? Scholars, you have one minute. You're writing your claim. I am going to share my claim with you. I wrote in his poem, Cleopatra, Swinburne warns his readers about her dual nature. She is both beautiful and dangerous. So scholars, you can see. I answered the question, if the message was one of warning or an appreciation, and then I gave my why. Again, I wrote in his poem, Cleopatra, Swinburne um, warns his readers about her dual nature. She is both beautiful and dangerous. So scholars, now that we have our claim, let's move to our next step. We now need to identify evidence. What evidence will you use to help support your claim. Now remember, your evidence should point to the author's craft. That means if you're saying the author uses imagery, you should have evidence that shows imagery. If you're saying the author used word choice, 
you should have evidence that shows the author's use of word choice. Now, yes, you can say that the author used both imagery and word choice. If you say that, you must provide one piece of evidence of imagery and one piece of evidence of word choice. Scholars, you will have two minutes. You are identifying your evidence. Again, the evidence must show the author's craft in his usage of imagery and or word choice. Scholars, you have two minutes. Your time has started. All right, scholars, so in front of you, you should have your claim and two pieces of evidence. Let's move to our next step. So scholars, in our next step, I am sharing with you the author's um, craft that I chose to use. I used imagery, and here is what I wrote. For my very first piece of evidence, I put, he includes images of her mouth fragrant as a vine and how her great curled hair makes luminous her cheeks. So in here, I am talking about her beauty. Then my second piece of evidence is also one of imagery. And I wrote, however, he includes other darker images to hint at her potential dangerous nature. In lines 13 through 15, he describes how through her hair, the imperial and curl likeness of the river snake, whose bite shall make an end of all. So scholars, if you see, when you go back to my claim, I wrote that he shows Cleopatra's dual nature, beautiful and dangerous. When you look at my evidence, I have evidence to support her beauty and evidence to support her dangerous side. Let's go to our next step, our analysis. Now remember, when you're writing your analysis, you need to include a higher word and make an inference or a because statement. Scholars, this is not when you would write your analysis like this. Analysis. This highlights that in his poem, Cleopatra, Swinburne warns his readers about her dual nature. She is both beautiful and dangerous. That won't cut it. You cannot simply just restate your claim. Make sure that you make an inference or a because statement. 
You have one minute, you're writing your analysis. Your time has started. Ten seconds. Thanks, scholars. And I am now going to share with you my analysis. In conclusion, my hired word. In conclusion, Swinburne wrote Cleopatra to warn his readers of her dual nature. She is beautiful, but she is also deadly. So scholars, again, in front of you, you should have your claim. You should have two pieces of evidence that shows the author's craft. And you should have your analysis. We're moving. So scholars, that is it for today's lesson. Now, when you answer your exit ticket on today, remember it must be an ACE response. You must answer the prompt. The prompt is asking you if the poem was written to warn or to appreciate Cleopatra. Afterwards, you need to describe how the author illustrates this message. To do that, you're going to get specific evidence of the author's crafts in your response. Again, scholars, in front of you, you should have your claim, two pieces of evidence, and your analysis. That means the only thing you need to give extra is your context. Scholars, I cannot wait to read your responses. I will see you on, hmm, we've used terrific. I will see you on thankful Thursday.